Hey everybody, Eric Smith here with part one of my series on F. F. Paul Wilson's Secret History of the World. Uh, and a quick recap, I'm only going to do this once in this video, because uh, I already did a special announcement video where I talked about this. But anyway, a whole bunch of F. Paul Wilson's uh, books and short stories encompass the secret history of the world, the, uh, the hidden underbelly that most people don't know about. And while I don't have everything, I have 21 or 22 of the books, uh, basically all the books in the Adversary Cycle, all the books in the... Um, nope, that's not true. All of the main books in the Repairman Jack series. I don't have the young adult books. There's three of those, and there are three prequels that I don't have, but I have the, uh, the other stuff. And I'm going to uh, read them all, and review them all, talk about them, see if I can tie things together in my head. Don't know uh, if, if I'll be able to do that. We'll see. Um, so we're starting with the first book that I have. Before we get to that, uh, this, is, this is a brand new book, Signals. It's the last, uh, well, it's a prelude to the last book. But uh, all of these editions that I have have these lists of everything that's in the secret history of the world. And year zero is when it all ends with Night World. And then you have year zero minus one, so that's the year before, year zero minus two, etc. But year zero minus three is the last time it's specific in these big chunks. Before that, we just have the past. So leading up to this book, The Keep, that I'm going to talk about in this video, uh, the first thing on this list for the secret history of the world is a short story called Demon Song, and it's just it just says prehistory. So that's when it takes place. Um, after that, we have a short story called The Compendium of S Srem, which takes place in 1498. Um, the short story Wardenclyffe takes place in 1903 to 1906. Short story, Arians and Absinthe, which takes place between 1923 and 1924. And then we have the novel Black Wind, uh, which says it takes place between 1926 and 1945. That brings us to The Keep, the book I'm going to talk about today, which takes place in 1941. This is the first book of the Adversary Cycle. Right here. Here it is. And... Uh, this is a fantastic book. Uh, I, I've read it before, a long time ago, and if you had asked me a few weeks ago what it was about, I simply would have said Nazis versus a vampire. Because uh, that's, I couldn't remember any of the specifics about it. Um, and that's essentially what it is. But, um, so what you have is, <laughs> we start with, um, this SS officer being called into a superior's office, and he's told he has to go to this keep because the uh, not, the German captain there has sent a message saying something is killing his men. And so this SS officer has to go and find out what's going on, <clears throat> and then craziness ensues. Uh, so this, right off the bat, incredibly well-written book, uh, it's, I, I'm going to say it's a masterpiece of horror. It's incredibly creepy. There are some scenes, and before I get into that, uh, th there may be some light spoilers here. I'll try to avoid uh, being super spoilery, but since this is, it's a review, but it's also part of this greater series, I may spoil some things. Um, I'll try to avoid it. But anyway, there are some scenes in here uh, with with darkness um, that uh, I'm not going to say anything else. Just these scenes with darkness, if you read the book or if you have read it, you'll know what I'm talking about, that are just really, really creepy. And sometimes, well, actually, most of the time I'm going to say we don't actually see what's happening, which, of course, makes it even creepier. Um, so... Uh, this uh, this captain, this German captain, 
uh, has been sent to this keep in Dinu Pass. I don't know if that's exactly how you say it. It's in Transylvania. And he's been sent there to uh, keep watch. He's got his troops with him, and they're supposed to watch that no uh, uh, enemies try to slip through. And from the time they arrive, every night, one of his men is being killed. And they don't know who's doing it, how it's being done. He starts to freak out after, I think, six deaths, sends this message out that something is killing his men, and then this SS officer uh, comes in to uh, figure out what's going on. And these, these two right off the bat are butting heads uh, because of something that went on in their past. They know each other from World War I, and uh, things escalate, and we meet um, Magda, I believe, and her father, who are... Uh, Jews, and they end up being dragged to the keep, which um, I'm going to tell you, Jews and Nazis don't mix. Uh, and then there's this mysterious red-headed man who is making his way from Portugal to the keep because something is pulling him there. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic story. It's, it's incredibly well-written. It's incredibly creepy. The characters are, are really well-written. And it's, it's, to me, it's about the nature of evil. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, we have German soldiers, 1941. But one of the interesting things is that there, there are levels to evil. Now, whatever it is that's in the keep that's killing these soldiers... Um, is it a spoiler that I tell you this is like the ultimate evil, but it's, it's not a, it's killing these soldiers, but it's, it's, it's not a concrete evil the way that Nazism is. We know what Nazis did. We know what was going on. Um, and, and it's, and we can wrap our heads, or, well, for lack of a better way to put it, we can wrap our heads around it what was happening, not necessarily why it was happening. Um, and so it, it's this it's this evil that we understand. It's this evil that's in our face. While the whatever it is that's killing the people is more, it, it's out there. It's, it's ephemeral, up to a point anyway. Um, and one of the things I like is that the captain that was initially sent to the keep refused to to join the Nazi party. So he's still a member of the German army, but he's not, he's a more sympathetic character. Um, he, he, and he's, he paints, he's at, at the keep, he's painting a landscape of the village that's, that's outside the keep. And that, that humanizes him, even though one might immediately say, German soldier, 1941, evil, and he's not the best guy, but he's not the worst guy. He's he's got a he, there's talk about his his wife and his son that he wants to get home to. Uh, I think he might have a daughter as well. Um, but the, you know he's again he paints. He's got this family. He refused to join the Nazi party. He's thinking of um, ending his commission, getting out of the out of the military because for him. Uh, World War I was a straightforward war. What's going on now in 1941 is not what he joined the military for. And so even though we might think, again, German officer, 1941, horrible person, he's not. And, and we're confronted with that. But then we have the SS officer who is an evil person. He treats when when Magda and her father, I really hope that's her name, um, when when they get to the keep, the the um, <clears throat> excuse me army captain doesn't treat them the best, but it's more about what he needs from them, not 
that he's treating them poorly because they're Jewish, whereas the SS um, officer treats them and believes that they are animals, treats them horribly. And we even see a difference between how the SS uh, commandos, I'm not going to try to pronounce the German uh, word, uh, but there's a difference between how the SS commandos and the regular army troops treat um, Magda and her father, especially Magda. Uh, but not that any of them treat them well. But there's there's levels. That's that's what we're seeing here is levels of evil. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say too much about the mysterious red-haired man uh, because that's something you should you should read the book and find out who he is and how he ties into all this. Read it and find out for yourselves. But um, it's uh, it it it. I I don't know if I don't know what F. Paul Wilson's plan for the secret history of the world was or is at this point. Um, I don't know if he already knew this is what he was doing when he wrote this book. Um, but we've, we're already seeing, I mean, obviously there's, there's a supernatural element to this book. So it is not the world we know. Um, and uh, I'm going to see as I'm reading through these books, how this ties in, or I, I don't know, maybe the books are, well, obviously the Repairman Jack books are going to all tie together. They're all about Repairman Jack and the adversary cycle books there's going to be something that ties them together. But between the two, and even the stuff that I'm not going to be able to read because I don't have them, uh, I don't know if there's a super thread running through the entire thing, or if they're just stories that take place in this secret history. Um, we'll find out together, I suppose. <laughs> um, but whether or not you're going to read all of these books... Whether or not you care about Repairman Jack or anything, I, I highly recommend The Keep. It just If you're a fan of horror fiction, I give it five out of five stars. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't recall if I read it before or after seeing the movie. Uh, and I do not remember the movie too well. Uh, I, I remember certain images... And some of the people in the cast, Ian McKellen is in the cast. Um, Scott Glenn, Jurgen Prock now. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, <laughs> I don't remember what I thought of the movie when I saw it. I do know it's not a very well-rated movie. Um, it was directed by Michael Mann, which I did not know at the time, who, of course, did Miami Vice, the TV show, uh, directed uh, Manhunter, which is a movie I love. Um, Heat, of course, is probably his biggest movie. People love that, but way back in the day, he made The Keep. Uh, I may have to find it somewhere and rewatch it just to see uh, what I think, see how it compares to the book, the fantastic book. Um, so... Yeah, that's, that's it. Just starting out, so I can't really analyze how it fits into the entire secret history of the world. Um, but I do, it is, you know, it could have just been a simple army guys versus vampire type of story. But like I said, and I'm not a deep reader, <laughs> um, but I, I really think that, that you've, it, it's about these, these levels of evil. And uh, man's inhumanity to man. And hopefully this isn't spoiling anything, but the, the deals that one might make with one evil to combat a greater evil, consider that a teaser, not a spoiler, um, because that's something that goes on in here. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's The Keep. Fantastic. Uh, the very next book on the list is the next book I have, which is Reborn. 
uh, and we're jumping from 1941 to February, March of 1968. So there's a good, uh, good bit of space in between uh, The Keep and Reborn. I have, I've never read Reborn before. I have no idea how it's going to fit into the adversary cycle or the entire secret history of the world. Uh, but we'll find out together. And I'm going to start that. I didn't want to start reading it until after I recorded this so that it wouldn't necessarily shade my thinking on this book or what I had to say about it. Um, so I'm going to be starting that either tonight before bed or tomorrow sometime. But um, <clears throat> there you go. The Keep. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't put some sort of link up here in one of the corners. Uh, there have been changes to YouTube and, and tools that you can use. So maybe I'm going to have a link up here for my announcement video. And I'll put that on, if I figure out how to do it, I'll put that on all of these videos so I don't have to talk about what it is I'm doing in this series every time. Um, but I am going to go through the list every time to fill in the gaps between what I'm reading. Um, even though there's no gap between The Keep and Reborn. Uh, and as I said, a bunch of these are short stories. I think the collections are available on Amazon, um, but I just don't have right now the time or money to grab them. And with the short stories especially, it would be kind of odd because I'd have to read a couple short stories in this collection and then a short story in the other collection and then a novel and then a couple more short stories uh, and it would just be be craziness so i just figured stick with the books i have which all have this type of cover you can see we'll put them together the first one and the second to last one um oh one other thing i was going to say as far as the timeline goes, I talked about year zero, year zero minus one, and now we're in the past. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know how specific the time gets once we get to year zero minus three, um, because I know that we're going to read the tomb, which is in year zero minus three, which puts it three years before the very last book, Night World. But they were written decades apart. So, I don't know how exactly time flows in this series, uh, amongst all these stories. I believe Ground Zero deals with... Uh, Ground Zero is in year zero minus one. So one year before the end of the world as we know it. Uh, and I believe it deals with the Twin Towers. Um, with 9-11. But I don't know, because uh, I've never read it. I don't know if it specifically says it's 2001 or if this is an alternate universe where time is off. Um, because if that's 2001 then the end of the world as we know it is 2002. But again, I don't know if F. Paul Wilson wanted it sort of set in concrete like that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how, how the time works uh, as, as we go along. And I've gotten to the part of the video where I'm starting to ramble. So that's it. Uh, the Keep, part one in my Secret History of the World series. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Feel free to read along. Um, as I said, the next book is Reborn, and I'll probably have the video for that in two or three weeks. Depends on how long it takes me to read it. Um, uh, questions, corrections, I did all that. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hopefully there'll be a link up here for something. If not, that's the way it goes. I can't figure everything out. Um, and I will have a link for this book in the description below. Uh, that's it. I'm Eric Smith. This is 
F. Paul Wilson's Secret History of the World. And until next time, read more books.